Hi everyone, my name is Federico Tartarini and in this video I'm going to show you how you can deploy on Google Cloud Run this very nice web application created with Plotly Dash. What is Plotly Dash? Plotly Dash is a productive framework for building web analytic platform. If you want to find out more about Plotly Dash, you can visit their website. But basically, it allows you to create a very nice web application with very little Python code. You don't need any front-end development skill, so you don't need to know, learn JavaScript or you don't need to learn React. You can just work with your Python skill and create a very nice web application. The only problem is that if you want to share your work with someone else, you need to deploy this web application online. And sometimes there are some other solutions, but they are not very good, as Google Cloud Run. I'm not supported by Google Cloud Run, and they're not paying me for this video, but I find it a very nice tool online that you can use it basically for free to deploy your application. So we're going to deploy a simple dash plotly application just because I want to keep it simple. The scope of this video is not to show you how to create an application with dash plotly, but instead is to show you how to deploy it on Google Cloud Run. So we're going to use this boilerplate code that is on their website. I'm going to put a link in the description and we will have to change it a little bit, but I will show you all the things that we need to do. In order to create the charts like this one here that I showed you before, we are going to use Plotly Express, which I think it also is a great tool, again developed by Plotly, and there are a lot of beautiful plots that you can create with Plotly Express. These are just few of the examples of the chart that you can create. Again, just have a look at their documentation and then select the chart that most suits your need. We are going to use Google Cloud Run. Google Cloud Run, it provides a serverless environment, so you don't have to maintain your server, uh, worry about runtime or up upgrade or update the servers. Google will take care of that. We're going to put all our application inside the Docker container, and then we're going to build it and deploy to Google Cloud Run. Why I'm selecting Google Cloud Run to deploy my application? Because it has a very good free tier. So of course you can be charged if you use your application a lot, but this is the free tier offered by Google Cloud Run. And if you just want to showcase your application with the friends, family, or even share it online on Twitter or LinkedIn, I think this free tier is quite generous and most likely you will not be billed for your application. And as you can see here, you get a $300 credit for, uh, to spend on Google Cloud. So that shouldn't be an issue. Pricing shouldn't be an issue for you if you have a small application and you want to showcase your work. We're going to deploy the application. We're going to create a project on the Google Cloud Console and I'm going to show you all the code. So follow along with me, follow all my steps, but don't worry too much about the code, copy and pasting it because I'm going to use some boilerplate code and I'm going to put it down in the video description. I'm going to create a project using PyCharm, PyCharm IDE. So I'm going to create a new project here on my computer and I'm going to save it in downloads and I'm going to create a virtual environment. If you work with a web application, it's always a good practice to create a virtual environment. Why you need to create a virtual environment is because you might have different packages installed on your computer inside Python, but then you want to make sure that that application is working regardless of the packages that you install or uninstall on your computer. So we want to create a virtual environment inside our project in order to make sure that we can test that specific application with those specific requirements. So we're going to create a new application and we're going to use Python 3.8 as a base interpreter and we're going to click here on create. PyCharm will create a new project for us. It's going to take a little bit of time because it's creating the virtual environment and it's doing that automatically. Of course, you don't have to use PyCharm. You can use any other ID or alternatively, you can just use even the command line. I think PyCharm is quite nice because it offers a lot of uh, features and there is the community edition, which is also free. Again, I'm not sponsored by PyCharm, but I think it's a good tool. That's why I'm using it, but feel free to use any text editor or just to write the code from the command line. It will work anyway. So I'm going to fast forward this section until PyCharm has created the virtual environment for us.
great PyCharm has created the environment for us. I'm going to use presenter mode just so you can see better what I'm doing. But basically, I will have the terminal here at the bottom, the project directory here on the left, and the code here in the center of the screen. So the first thing that we want to check is the Python packages that are installed in our virtual environment. And this command pip list should return just pip and setup tools. So these are bare bone packages that are installed with Python. So the first thing that we need to do is to create an app.py file. So we can click here in the project directory, right click, new, Python file, here, and we're going to call it app. And then inside here, we're going to copy the code, the boilerplate code from dash. So let me just go back to the website here, and I'm going to copy this boilerplate code to create this application. So first thing that we want to do is to test this application locally. So we can press here on the play button. Alternatively, in the terminal, we can type Python and then app.py. Of course, we get an error because we haven't installed Dash. As we saw before, the only two packages that were installed are pip and setup tools. So let's go and install Dash. So we do pip install Dash in the terminal. Alternatively, with PyCharm, you could also click here on the error message, Alt Enter, and then you say install package Dash. But I'm going to do it from the terminal. So I'm going to install Dash. Dash comes with other dependencies, so it is going to install automatically Plotly, Dash Core Components, and Dash HTML, and we just need to install Pandas. So in the meantime, while we are installing all these packages, let's go and create another file here inside our repository, new, and then we're going to call it file, and then we're going to call it requirements.txt. Inside this requirement.txt, we are going to put all the requirements that we need for our project to work. Why this is important? It is important because Google Cloud Run needs to know which dependencies are needed for our application to work. So in order to tell it that, we just need to specify all the Python packages that Python needs to run our application. So basically inside here, I'm going to save all the pack, I'm going to list all the packages that we need for our application to work. So we need Dash, we need to Pandas and Plotly. You don't need to specify the version. Technically, you could just leave it this part here empty. You can just say Dash. I would recommend you to specify the version too because Dash might release a new version of Dash or Pandas may release a new version of their package and then may create errors and your application may no longer work. So it's better to specify the version of the Python package that you want, then test locally that if you update this package, when it's going to be released, everything is working, and then you can update it here in the requirement file. To build and deploy our application, we're going to need to package our application inside a Docker container. Don't worry too much about that. I'm going to explain what I'm going to write in the Docker file. It's going to be simple and you don't need to change it much. So just follow along with me. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it docker file. So this is going to create a docker file here. And inside the docker file, we just have to copy again some boilerplate code. So in this case, we're going to use Python 3.8 and we are specifying it here from Python 3.8. Then we need to specify what is inside the Docker, our environment, working directory, and what we need to do. So basically we need to copy inside everything that is in the source directory inside this Python project, inside Docker. This is a standard Docker code, don't worry too much about it. You don't have to change it. Then we're going to install the packages with pip install requirements.txt. Again, is as you would do on uh, local, but then we need to install, of course, uh, all the packages inside Docker. Then we need to expose the port in the application, and we need to run this command with command python app.py. And this is the same command that we're going to run locally to, in, uh, to start our application. So now that uh, all our packages have been installed, let me see which packages we have. So we have uh, a pip, we have dash now, we have flask, we still don't have pandas, so we need to do pip install 
expand this. Great, we have installed pandas, so we can type here in the terminal python app.py and this hopefully should run our application locally. Fantastic, we can see that Dash is running on this port and this location, so we can click here and we can see our Dash application locally. Hello Dash, a Dash a web application framework for Python. So let's go back into PyCharm, let's change a little bit the source code here. As you can see now the red line are gone because we have installed all these packages and we're going to change hello dash and um, a web application from Python and we say YouTube tutorial. Okay, we save that. Let's see if it has reloaded. So if I refresh, YouTube tutorial. So as you can see, I have changed our application. Of course, feel free to add a new chart to change the application based on your needs. And you can find other tutorials, or if you want to find out more how to use Dash and Plotly and Plotly Express, maybe just write down a comment in the video description and I can release new videos based on your request. But just have a look at the source documentation and you can find a lot of examples on how to add chart with Plotly Express and Dash. So now that we have our application working locally, we just need to do a couple of more things in order to deploy it on Google Cloud Run. So the first thing that we need to do is to go back here inside our project, inside app.py, and we just have to slightly modify this app.py file. So instead of debug true, we're going to say debug false because we want to deploy this application and we don't want to have it in debug true. Then we just have to change the host, and host we are going to say 0.0.0.0, .0 and then we want to specify the port in which we want to expose this application in the web, and is 8080. So inside here, the Docker file, we are also exposing the same port 8080. Okay? So actually, let me change this. So we're going to change, expose, expose the port 8080. The final thing that we need to do, and you, you will not have to do it in your case, but I'm going to do it right now, just to show you all the commands that we need to do to deploy our project. So I'm going to create a readme file. So we're going to call it readme.markdown. And inside here, I'm going to copy all the commands that are needed for you to deploy your application to Google Cloud Run. So let me copy here. And let me explain what we are doing here. So you're going to type two commands in the terminal. The first one is to build the application in Docker and submit it. And so we're going to build it online because you don't need to have Docker installed for this tutorial on your computer. Of course, if you have Docker installed on your computer, you can also build it locally and then you can send the image online. You can just push the image, but we're going to leverage Google Cloud Run and Google Cloud Platform, sorry, and we're going to build it online. So we don't even need to have Docker installed locally. What we need to change in this command or what you will need to change in this command is this and where every time you see project, okay? So this is my project name. This is my specific project name and you will not be able to push your application to my project. You will have to push it to your project. How can you create a project and how can you find out the name of the project? Well, that's super simple. You can go here in Google Cloud uh, Platform and then you can click on Console. Once you click on Console, you're going to be prompted with this landing page or you might be in a different part of the page. Just click here at the top in Testbed and if you don't see anything, you will see Create a New Project. So you click here at the top and you will see all the projects that I have. If you don't have any project here, just create a new project and just simply create a new project for your specific application. So you can call it dash plotly YouTube. I have already a project created, so I'm not going to create another one. The important thing that you not need to note down is that the title of the project that you, you put over there when you click on new project is going to be this one name. But when we deploy, we need to use this ID. 
okay? So in this case, I've copied testbed 310521. So if I go back into my code, as you can see, I've copied testbed 310521 here, 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 and inside project here, so in four locations. Another thing that you might want to change, but you don't need to change specifically, is the name of your application. So in my case, I call it Dash YouTube. And we're going to actually change the name because Dash YouTube is already there. So if I go in Google Cloud Run, so I click here at the top, I click on Google Cloud Run, you can see that my application is actually running and is visible to the, to the public. So anyone with a public URL can actually visit this application. So what we're going to do is to create another application. So we're going to change the name and we're going to deploy. So we're going to call it Dash YouTube example. So since I'm changing it up there, I need to change it also here. How can you run this two command? In order to run this two command, you need to have installed on your computer, which is also another requirement that I forgot to mention before. You need to have installed on your computer the Google Cloud SDK. So you can just type Google Cloud SDK and then install. And then you will find in the instruction to install Google Cloud SDK. It's super simple. Inside your terminal, you can just type this command here and you're going to be prompted with an installation and then you just have to follow the steps. But it's very simply explained here on their documentation. So just follow along with this guide. I'm going to put a link down in the description on how to follow along with that. Great, so we have done everything. So now we can go back to our project and we can just run these two commands here. Bear in mind that as I previously mentioned, you need to have Google Cloud SDK installed. If you don't want to install Google Cloud SDK for any reason on your computer, I have another video and I will put a link here at the top in which I show you how you can sync this project with GitHub and then you can clone it um, inside the Google Cloud platform and you can deploy it. Honestly, I think it's better that you install the Google Cloud SDK because it's going to make your life easier. So we can open a new terminal here and we're going to just copy and paste this command here. So we are going to submit, we're going to build it. This process is going to take a few minutes actually and I'm going to fast forward it. Great, we get a success message, as you can see here at the bottom, success. There was a small error here, but don't worry too much about it. It's a running pip as a root will break packages and permission. It's not a big problem. It's just an error that I get. Maybe I should try to find a solution to that, but it's not going to break your build process. And right now we have built our application and was successfully built. So we didn't get any error in the build inside the Docker container. The last thing that we need to do is to deploy our application because at the moment it's not deployed yet. So if you go back here into the Google Cloud console, so if you go inside here, inside my project, inside the Google Cloud Run instances that are running the application, you will see that there is only this application. Inside a project, you can build more than one application. You're not limited to have one application per project. It's up to you how you organize it. Usually I have one project per application. And then inside the project, you can have a database or something else, some Google Cloud functions, but it's up to you how you organize that. So basically here we have Dash YouTube, but we don't have Dash YouTube example because we haven't pushed it yet. So let's go back to our uh, terminal here. So we just have to run this second command. So we're going to run deploy the image that we just created. And then we're going to say platform manage. So Google Cloud Run is going to manage everything. We have to specify the project name because that's the project name that we, we need to specify. And we need to allow unauthenticated calls. What does it mean? It means that everyone can see your application because if you don't put this tag here, just be very mindful that you don't, if you don't put this tag here, you will only be able to see the application, but no one else will be able to see your application. So it really depends on your application on what you need to do. But in my case, I want to showcase my work with other people. So I need to make sure that is allow unauthenticated. So I'm going to copy this line of code here 
here at the bottom inside the terminal, and we are going to run this one. It's going to ask us a couple of questions. Let's see the question. So here we have the service name, and this is the name that is going to appear here inside the Google Cloud Platform, inside here Google Cloud Run. I'm happy with the Dash YouTube example, so I'm going to just press Enter. I need to specify where I want to deploy my application. I am currently in Singapore, so I'm going to select Asia South or Asia Southeast. I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as it's close to your users and you never know where you, all your users are going to be. So in my case, I'm going to just select six for the moment and then press enter. And this is going to deploy our, our application. So as you can see here, it's doing something in the background and I will fast forward again this section here and I will show you once everything is ready. Fantastic, so everything was fine. We can see a lot of okay messages. Everything was um, good. We can see that the service has been deployed, 100% of the traffic, and we can click on the service URL. So if you click here, we're going to be redirected to the service URL, and this should load our application. It might take a little bit of time for the first time to load, and here we are. Hello Dash, Dash a web application framework for Python. So everyone can actually now access my application using this URL. If you want to, if you forget this URL, once you close the terminal, you can always go inside here into the Google Cloud Console, refresh this page, and then now you will see that there are two applications. One is YouTube example, Dash YouTube example. So we click here, and then here at the top, you will see the URL that you can use to access your application. So if I click here, again, I'm going to reload the same application. If you now want to change your application, it's super simple. You just have to go inside here, app.py. And then you can just change the code as I previously done here. Maybe you could remove this YouTube tutorial and then you can do all the steps that we did before. So you're going to build it first with this command here and then we are going to deploy it with the same command here. I really hope you find this video interesting. If you have any question or if you face any issues, while following along in the video, just feel free to leave a comment down in the video description or just leave a nice comment if you find this video useful. I would really appreciate if you could just like my video and subscribe to my channel because that would really help me a lot to grow as a YouTube channel and that also motivates me to release more video like this one. Thank you very much for listening and if you want to support this channel, please consider buying me a coffee via the website buy me a coffee i put the link down in the video description below see you next time